Okay, let's talk about installing and configuring a Samba server. Now, before I dive into this, I want to show you, I actually have two virtual machines set up here. So I've got a demo machine and a test machine. And I'm going to use these two machines while we walk through Samba, NFS, and then a couple of other ways of copying files between systems. So we'll start out, so we'll have both of them on the screen so we can flip back and forth so you can see this from both sides. Okay, now let's start by working with Samba. Samba is the Linux implementation of the SMB protocol, which is used by Microsoft Networking. So if you're looking for a file sharing platform or a file sharing server in an environment that's going to be a mixed platform environment, so think Windows clients and Mac clients and Linux clients, then using Samba is a great solution. The other one we can use is NFS, and we're actually going to walk through that uh, in a couple of other videos a little bit later on. NFS works much better for Linux only uh, environments. Now, there is a way that you can connect to NFS servers using Windows clients. And they've changed the tool that you use for it from time to time. But typically, if it's going to be a mixed network environment, I really like using Samba. Uh, if it's going to be a Linux only environment, I think NFS has a lot of things going for it, including the fact that it integrates with security a little bit better. Now, Samba can integrate with Active Directory and it can be a very powerful tool. Now, we're not going to go that deep into Samba. We're going to go through setting up a Samba server. And within that uh, Samba server, we're going to basically force everybody to use one user account just so we can show you how it works. But then if you want to go deeper into Samba, you can look for ways to integrate it with Active Directory and use Active Directory um, user accounts to control access. And it actually becomes a very useful, powerful network tool. We're just going to walk through the basics of getting Samba up and running. So I'm going to start. I'm going to switch to my root user. And I am going to go to my root directory. And in my root directory, I'm going to make a directory called shares. And then within shares, I'm going to make a directory called SMB. So I'll use the same area when I create my NFS exports. So I'm just going to stick it all in this one location. So here's what I've got. And this is currently owned by root. Now I want to change that because I am going to force everybody who connects to this. I'm going to force a user. And what I mean by that is everyone's going to connect using one username and password. So I'm going to make sure that username and password has the rights to log in. So not root and owns this. So I want to use my ch own and I want to change the owner to my account for my folder SMB. And there we go. I'm also going to change the group to users for the SMB folder. And now we have, there we go, that looks better. There is my SMB folder owned by David and the group is users. Okay, so now that I've got that set, now I can start looking at installing Samba. So the command is going to be apt install Samba. Really complicated, right? Yes, I wanna go ahead and update this. So this is gonna download and install my Samba server for me. Now, like most things, it's going to come with a base configuration. And I am going to back up that configuration, and then we're going to create our own. Now, a base Samba configuration is actually pretty straightforward. We're just about done here. There we go. All right. I'm going to, so I'm going to do my system CTL, and I want to look at the status of my SMBD or my Samba daemon. And it's going to tell me that it's active and running. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Whoops. There we go. So it's systemctl stop SMBD. And then let's go to etc forward slash Samba. And let's look and see what we have here. So we have an smb.conf file. I'm going to nano that file real quick. 
and this shows me my sample configuration. And this gives me a fair amount of documentation here. So this is cool. I don't want to lose this file. So I'm going to go ahead and make a backup copy of it because you might want to come back to this a little bit later on and be able to view more of this, uh, the documentation here. So I'm going to move SMB. I think it's SMBD. Let me confirm that. Nope, just SMB. So I'm going to move SMB.CONF to SMB dot conf dot o r i g and that moves that to or that gives that that renames that file that's the word i was trying to think of renames that file and now identifies it as my original so i'm going to create a new smb dot conf file now i'm going to break this into two groups so my first group is going to be global um, this is also referred to as a stanza. So my server string, server string, is going to be file server. And that's going to be the description that will show up in browse lists. I'm going to set my work group to, and this is just the default. Now, obviously, you'd set the server string. And remember, server string is not the server name. That's the description. So you'd set that to something that makes sense for your network. The work group of work group, that capital work group, is the Microsoft Windows default work group. So I'm just going to leave it there because all my clients would most likely be there anyway. I'm going to set my security to user. Now, if you were using a different work group or a different domain, domain, obviously you're going to change that. You're also not going to set the security to user. That user means use local user accounts here to um, confirm access. I'm going to map to guest equals bad user, which basically means somebody who doesn't have a user account will basically function as a guest. We're going to set name resolve order. And this has to do with name resolution. And we're going to do bcast or broadcast and wins. Now at this point, be aware wins is a deprecated tool. We're putting it in here for backwards compatibility. So basically what it means is we're going to resolve names by broadcast first. And then if broadcast doesn't work, we'll look for a win server, which means we'd have to define a win server and we don't have one, but that's okay. If you had one, you'd have it in there for backwards compatibility. Now, the uh, last thing here is we can put in an include statement, which means include another file. And some people will do that. They'll set their base configuration or their global configuration here, and they'll do another uh, include file, which is going to say include this other config file. And in that other config file is going to be all of their uh, shares. Now, some people really like that. I actually prefer putting it all in one. And you'll actually see here in a little bit why. So I'm going to create a share called SMB. And for that, I'm going to set my path. And that's going to be forward slash shares forward slash SMB. So that's going to be where that is located at. I'm going to say force user which basically means anybody who connects, it's going to force them to use the account of David. And I'm going to force group to be users. So that's going to be their users and their group. Now, uh, I want to set some security options. So I'm going to do create mask equals... 0664. And then I'm going to say force create mode equals 0664. We're going to talk about these in just a minute. Then I'm going to have a directory mask of 0777. Forgot my equal sign. And then I'm also going to include a force directory mode of 0777. 
Now, what do we mean by that? Those are the permissions. So basically it says when we create a file, we're going to use this create mask. And those are the permissions that we're going to assign. And if you remember, we've done a video before on setting uh, Linux permissions. So you can jump back to that and review those permissions. So what that does is that says the user, the owner, gets read and write permissions. The group that owns it gets read and write permissions and everyone else gets read permissions. And that's what's going to be our default when we create a file. When we create a directory, that's where these two lines come in. And that mode 777 is read, write, execute for everything. Now, there's a couple of more lines that I'm going to put in here. I'm going to say public equals yes. So this is going to be wide open and writable equals yes. Now, like I said, we're not going really fancy here. We're doing this really, really basic. So now that I've got all of this set, and remember, I set my permissions on that uh, folder that I created that I was going to use. So I'm going to save my configuration and then control X. Now I can check and see if this works or not. And the way it's, uh, the way I can check before I activate it is with a tool called test parm. T E S T P A R M. And that's test parameters. And so what this does is this goes through and checks my configuration. This test parm is included too. There we go. Didn't hit her. Um, this test parm is uh, something that is included in Samba as a way of testing your configuration. So you'll see here, loaded services file looks okay. Wheat crypto is allowed. It's a standalone server. These are the parameters that we would have. Now, one of the reasons that I like to include my shares in this particular file in the smb.config is because then test parm will verify it. Let me show you what I mean here. I'm going to nano smb.conf and I'm going to screw this up. Let me delete the R. So save it, exit, clear, test parm. And this comes back and says load SMB configuration files, unknown parameter encountered, encountered. There we go. See if I can say it correctly. And it tells me, hey, there's a problem in my config file. And I don't always have a pickup if I do an include file. Test Parm will verify this one, but it doesn't always include the share definitions in my other files. So by including it in this one file, Test Parm can look at the entire file for me. So. Let me go fix that, smb.conf. I'm going to change this back to writable now spelled correctly. Let me test parm again. And everything looks good. OK, now the next step is to bring my server up. So from my uh, command line, it's systemctl status s whoops i need to start first smb b d there we go and then i can system ctl status smbd okay and now we are loaded and active now notice by the way down at the bottom we have red lines there if you look at those, they actually don't say there's a problem. SMB finished starting up and is ready to serve connection. Well, for some reason, they put it in red, which we're kind of used to looking at that as an error. But in this case, it's not. It shows that our service is active and running and ready to receive connections. OK, so our next step is going to be to connect to an SMBD share or a Samba share. We're going to do that from our other virtual machine but I'm also going to do that in my next video.